Ever since the first teaser trailer for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 was released, I was curious to find out what the red gas that is heavily shown in each of the trailers really is. Before the game released, theorists have called it the Poppy Gas, because they connected it to the Poppy Gel we read about in Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. And because the game is finally out, today we are going to find out what the so-called red smoke really is. But before I start this video, I need to address that this video will be cut into two major parts. In the first part, we are going to figure out what the red smoke is in the lore of the games, and whether it is from importance. Whereas in the second part of this video, I am going to take a look at similar gases that function or have functioned the same way in reality. Two warnings up ahead. The second part of this video should only be considered as a comparison to reality and should in no way be recreated at home or wherever you watch this video. Thank you. And here's the second warning. The video contains spoilers for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 Deep Sleep. Let's get right into it. To kick things off, let's go through Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 and find out when we encounter the red smoke what it is described to be and what effect it has on us, since we inhaled it twice in the chapter. We start off this chapter inside a garbage compactor, and after we successfully escape it, make our way through the staff-only areas of the factory encountering the red smoke. On first sight, it is visibly red and moving very slow. While we do a small platforming level, the gas that serves as the thing that's going to kill us if we fall in it stays on the ground. We continue and meet Ollie, a new suspicious character who leads us to Playcare and the gas production zone, tasking us to disable the production which is still going, even after 10 years. Once we try to stop the production, we encounter a handful of bosses and minigames that eventually lead us back to the gas production zone. In one of the puzzles, we see a red fluid, which could either be a gas in its fluid state or the poppy gel. Or maybe both, we'll get to it. During another minigame, we see the gas flying around the entire place, through hallways, buildings and even vents. In the home sweet home area, which is the orphanage of Playcare, we breathe in the red smoke, being knocked out simultaneously. And instead of waking up after that knockout or just dying, we experience a creepy dream sequence. Inside of it, we encounter a nightmarish huggy wuggy and lots of hints to our character, which is important for another video. But overall, the important thing is, we have a bad nightmare, which is something we didn't see for the first time, since in the ARG for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, we found a file made by a counselor named Claire Harper, regarding serious nightmare the child Mary Payne, aka Mommy Longlegs, had. We can find a VHS tape about that nightmare in Chapter 3 too. That tape, it gets very obvious that the red smoke is a tool the company uses to get the children to sleep, as referenced in many VHS tapes and documents from the ARG. In Chapter 3, we can find lots of gas masks for employees to back this up. A poster can even be found in the gas production zone regarding the importance of wearing the mask as an employee. There we go, mystery solved, right? The red smoke is a gas used in the play care to put the children to sleep with the side effect of brutal nightmares. You see, we know that the children in the orphanage were being experimented on. We know that from the tapes and documents in chapter 2 and 3. But we also know that there is a so-called poppy gel mixture existing used for those experimentations. In chapter 2 we find a document labeled as experiment 814 or 814 being a documentation about trying to revive a dead rat inside of the poppy gel mixture, with the potential of the poppy flower extraordinary called out. That person tells us that they still believe in the potential of the flower and maybe something of bigger size would help, which is why they started testing on children in the first place. But on top of that, that tells us that the red smoke may actually be created with the attempt to prepare the children for the experiments. If they tested a poppy gel mixture, who says they haven't tried a poppy gas mixture too? That could possibly explain why they even use gas to put the children to sleep in the first place. Of course, they could use the gas as a sort of sleeping pill to keep the children asleep during their testings, 
But why wouldn't they just get the children to sleep in other ways? Cheaper ways. As we know, Playtime Co. was known for their marketing and money managing. So why would they create an entire production zone for Red Smoke if it weren't specifically for deeper experimentation purpose too? I would guess that this is pretty clear then. They've used the gas in Playcare to get the children ready. Maybe the gas would change them before the experimentations so they could perform those procedures with the help of the gas. Because as we know from the poppy gel mixture, it didn't quite seem to work at least for the smaller objects. The red smoke must have been made with a special poppy flower to have an effect on the children before the procedure. Kind of like a cult ritual before sacrifice. The poppy flower has to be an unnatural tool then, hence too why we see so much poppy imagery all around Playtime's co-factory. I think we will hear about experimentations a lot more in the future chapters and I think the red smoke or poppy gas is very important for that story. And with that, we have arrived at the second part of this video, in which we try to find a real-life counterpart to the red smoke from the game. To get a good answer, I've decided to divide the real-life counterpart into three separate criterias. The first and obvious one, the gas should naturally be red. The second one, the gas makes humans fall asleep instantaneously. The third and last one, the gas has side effects of terrible nightmares. Just to tell you already, I've looked it up and there is no gas in the world that could possibly fit all the criteria at once without going sci-fi again. And therefore I'll declare gas for each and every criteria we go through. For the first one, the answer is pretty tricky. You see, the color of a gas, which on its own is very complicated to talk about, is dependent on the room and amount of light it is in. In certain lights, a naturally colorful gas wouldn't have a color anymore, but rather be invisible. That already breaks the criteria for the red smoke, since in Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, we can see the red smoke in the dark, with dim and with lots of light. But still, I'm just going to take the best gas for the red smoke comparison I could find, nitrogen dioxide, which in certain lights has a natural brown to reddish color, almost like the red gas of Poppy Playtime. How does that work though? Basically. The concentration of the gas has an important effect on the visibility, since with a higher concentration, nitrogen dioxide can absorb light of the blue and violet variant, while the red and brown colors get reflected into our sight, giving it that red look. The same gas with a lower concentration could not absorb enough colors and could therefore vary on color, most of the times it be colorless though. An important detail about nitrogen dioxide is that it is not healthy to breathe in and can cause serious problems with breathing, which could connect it even more to the poppy playtime gas. Switching to the next criteria, throughout history there have been lots of gases that have been used to put people to sleep, but due to health risks have been made illegal or decreased in its usage. One example lots of people probably know about is the so-called laughing gas. A gas that would fit perfectly for some of the red smoke criteria. Laughing gas was and sometimes is still used as a medical helping supply to reduce the amount of pain in procedures, just like in Poppy Playtime. It also makes people very addictive to it, which is why the gas got its name, because relaxed people or addicted people sometimes start to giggle and laugh just like we see in this Marlin Critter video, although this is just a coincidence I suppose. In the mid 19th century, laughing gas or nitrous oxide was first introduced as an anesthetic during dental procedures and surgeries. Its ability to provide the pain relief analgesia made it a very popular choice for the use. If you don't know what anesthetic is, it's basically the narcotic that is used in hospitals. Later in the 19th century, laughing gas was used for more entertaining effects, such as a drug for parties. A big problem with that gas is that when it's used a lot, it can actually get pretty unhealthy, since it can lead to oxygen deprivation, which could end lethal. It can also cause neurological issues, hence to why it mostly isn't used anymore, and if so, then it's in very small doses. The third and last criteria is one that, to be honest, was a little foolish to name as a criteria, since there has never been an actual gas made to induce nightmares or hallucinations, but of course, there have been some that indeed had bad side effects, just like N2O we just talked about. So to make this one pretty quick, I'm just going to choose laughing gas again, 
because the neurological issues can be the exact cause of nightmares and hallucinations. With two guesses found that functioned similarly to the red smoke of the game, I think that we've arrived at the end. The two guesses bring together the similarities of real life gases with the science fiction red smoke. On to the educational part. If you don't know about this, MadPat, the king of theories, has inspired me to introduce an educational aspect to my theory videos, which is why this part exists. To show you what I have learned and what you potentially could have learned in this video. I have personally learned how the colors of gases work. I also found out that medicine and surgeries in the past were not specifically safe. Of course, I knew that before, but it's interesting to have examples like the laughing gas about it. And the last thing I have learned, laughing gas is still used today, mostly in dentistry for small procedures because the effect doesn't actually last long. And that wraps up everything for today. If you enjoyed this video, mind liking and subscribing so this teeny tiny channel can grow. We have a long way to go, but I'm excited to do it. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next video. See ya!